Hello and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And this is the player ratings video for Everton's 2-2 draw against uh, Chelsea, which um, I think we all would have been happy with before the match. And uh, the more I think about it, the more I actually think it's probably one of the better performances we've maybe had um, under Deitch. And, you know, I, I mean, performance... Wise, I, I guess is maybe not quite the right word to, to use because obviously it was another game where, as we expected, being away against uh, understandably superior side, we didn't really have too much of the actual ball itself. But I thought the actual like the way we went about our business was very intelligent. We picked our moments when when we wanted to, you know, go forward and and cause some issues. And at the end of the day, we've come away with two goals from Stamford Bridge, which you know, based on a few weeks ago, how. Uh, Paul, we looked in front of goal. It just shows how much better we're getting at taking our chances. We're actually managing to score more away from home than at home at the moment. Obviously, you know, you look back at Nottingham Forest away, our last away match, another two goals there, um, and another two goals here as well. And um, I thought it was a, like I say, just a really um, intelligent performance. And uh, I guess we'll kind of get into that through each individual player's uh, rating as we go on. Um, but starting with Pickford, um, I wasn't really too sure where to go with this because, because obviously you know Chelsea had a lot more of the ball. You you can imagine and 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 you know had much more sustained spells of pressure than we ever did. Um, and yet I don't really remember Pickford being like having to make too many you know difficult saves, if any. Um, and looking it up, I saw Chelsea had seven shots on target. Obviously, two of them are the goals. Um, won, won a penalty, which obviously Pitford could do nothing about on the second. Just a re the first, even side Felix's goal, just kind of unfortunate based on the angle and how he hit it. It's a really difficult one because it was right in that corner, and maybe he was expecting it to be hit better and maybe with a bit more height. It was, it was a difficult one for him to get to. I don't think anyone can place any blame on Pitford for either of the goals. Um, and I, like I say, I don't really remember him making too many saves. Obviously, shots on target can count if. It's definitely going in and it's blocked by a defender, which I feel like must have been the case for at least several of those shots on target. Because like I say, I just don't remember him being forced into so many saves. I'm sure someone will point out in the comments or whatever if I'm if I'm missing any obvious ones. But I thought that was much more down to our world of defence play, which we'll uh, get onto now. So Pickford just gets a standard six. You can't really give him any low if he doesn't make a mistake or anything like that. Just another solid performance, really. And I'm sure if he needed to be called into action for a, a seriously top save, I'm sure we would have um, managed it at the form he's in at the moment. So, um, yeah, a six for him. When they, and then Seamus Coleman um, also gets a six. I think, you know, he's just absolutely working his arse off at the moment. And I think the fact that um, that he was brought off for Mikhalenko at the end and Godfrey was moved around rather than just it being a, a straight swap at, um, at left-back shows that... Um, Shows just how much Dyke recognizes how much he's working, you know, definitely getting on as we've all known for a while now, Coleman. Um and you know, just giving those last few minutes off really. And uh but still just a really good performance, kept Pulisic re really quiet, I thought. So yeah, just another top performance from Coleman really. He's really stepped up these last few weeks in Patterson's absence. Obviously the Scots still not back on the bench yet, even though him and Garner were kind of meant to be in the same stage of recovery. Garner's been on the bench the last few games now, but still no sign of Patterson. So might be a while before we see him. But and honestly, at the moment, Coleman is uh, more than proven his worth as as he's done for so long now, which is obviously just so great to see. Um, and then Michael Keane, another one who I think has really stepped up in the last few matches, obviously has come in uh, after Cody was... Dropped is a bit of a harsh word, but I think we all kind of realise after that Villa performance in particular, probably needed to uh, maybe have a few matches away. And and honestly, at the moment, I don't think Keane's doing anything to warrant being replaced by him again. He's him and Tarkovsky were both really solid, and like I say, kind of just must have blocked everything really um, for for Chelsea to have had so many attempts that didn't really draw Pickford into making anything too difficult. So, like I said, two really intelligent performances, and Tarkovsky as well. Although some you could possibly say he was partly at fault for the penalty, although I maybe thought that was more Godfrey's fault than him. Tarkovsky again was still very solid. Obviously gets the assist for the uh, for the first goal, the uh, the flick on Heather for the Corey to to head in um, for our first goal from the corner. Just such a 
such a weapon that we have now and and from set pieces in the form of him and you know he was barely getting a sniff on the Lampards from corners but now he's just absolutely um crucial to them so proving his worth at both ends and I think him and Keane both have to have sevens really even though Chelsea scored twice it was still a really solid defensive performance from us and you know I've just mentioned Lampard there I think that type of game could have been three or four nil under him at Stamford Bridge so like I say that just shows how much we've improved um, under Deitch. And then Ben Godfrey, I think I would also probably give a six. Um, because obviously the questions are starting to come in, whether it should be him or Michalenko starting. Michalenko came on and actually kind of did a pretty solid job. I kind of think Godfrey suits these kind of games a bit more. Um, when we, you know, most of the time, backs to the wall, last ditch tackling, which obviously he's shown how good he is. Loves a strong tackle on that. And while it was a bit of a silly mistake for the penalty that he maybe didn't need to do, maybe a bit of lack of communication between him and Tarkovsky, maybe, I thought he still had a, a pretty decent game. So I'd I, I imagine in home games now, I'd probably be starting with Michalanko more. I know people say about how much he lacks going forward, but I just the fact he's naturally left-footed, I think, offers us a bit more. And I, I still prefer him going forward than Godfrey in, in, in an odd sort of way. Some people might disagree with that. So uh, let us know in the comments uh, who you'd be starting at that left back in our, in our next game against Tottenham. Um, just Gay, I'm going to give a seven. I've been quite critical of him in recent weeks, but I thought he was much better um, in this game. Got an early yellow card, of course, but otherwise was really good, really helped rake up the play and help get a few attacks going and stuff. And... Yeah, it was just kind of crucial to that transition when we needed it, really. And you know, we love how we know how good he is at winning the ball back for us. And just just in games like that, that is absolutely crucial when he's on it. Um, so yeah, I think he gets. I'd give him a seven as well. I think. And then Anana again. I thought he was better than he has been in the last few games. Again, his his form's kind of dipped a bit after absolutely bossing games at the start of the year. Um, it's not quite been that same level of late but I still thought I had a very good game again especially defensively everyone needed to kind of be on it against a team like Chelsea away and I think that, that's evident in hearing out about how no one's really had too much of a bad game and like I say Nala was solid he's still not quite as involved as like, like I say he used to be but hopefully that's just something that will come again soon it might be a confidence thing I'm not sure but I think we all need to be a bit patient with him because I think we, it's clear to us that he's one of the best young prospects we've had on our books for a while now. So um, give, it, give, it, give it time. And I'm sure if he is still here for the next few years, we'll see a really, really talented player emerge. So I think we're all excited for that. And then the core man of the match by a mile, probably has been for the last three matches now. Um, just a man possessed at the moment, isn't he? Absolutely perfect for... Deitch's system was kind of left out in the cold under Lampard, but he's been so good lately. A goal and an assist again in this game. Uh, absolutely runs his socks off. He's absolutely vital in that role. He is kind of further forward than the rest of the midfield, almost in behind supporting Gray. Um, it's, it's a really crucial role. Already scored twice for us now um, in, our, in our last two away matches. And just absolutely, like I say, just so vital for us now. It's mental that a man that was so alienated under one manager literally just a few weeks ago is now arguably our most important player. It's almost, it almost mirrors what um, uh, Awobi was like last season. So, yeah, an eight for the core. Eh? And then speaking of Awobi, um, as I say, about the turnaround in fortunes we saw with him under Lampard, with him being moved into the middle, now he's being moved back onto the right. Lo and behold, he's not. He's just not having that same impact, is he, really? Um I feel harsh having to say it and I by no means do I like writing him off and saying he's gone back to what we used to have or whatever, but he was probably our worst player um in this match. And I I, I say I have thin sympathy because I don't think he's playing in his in the position where he feels the most comfortable or at the very least could have the most impact. But the way the core is playing in that exact role, you can't really change that. So it it makes me worry that obviously, you know, this is a whole separate topic but it does make me think that he might be someone we let go in the summer I know a lot of fans won't be happy to hear that but you know with, with him you know there was talks of when he was in really good form at the start of the season of a new contract coming in because that obviously that contract expires next summer uh, not this summer coming the summer after 
So, and that if he can't fit into the system that Deitch wants to play, and and it, it would appear Deitch is going to be sticking with Decore for the foreseeable, you'd imagine, then it might just have to be a case of cutting our losses. And, you know, we'll probably get quite a decent amount of money for him, still a good age, and obviously was having a really good season at one point. Could probably still, by warrant an argument for being our player of the season now, obviously there's still a few matches left for someone to uh, for someone to change that. But, yeah, it might, it might very well end up being the case that, you know, especially if we do still need money, which obviously no one's entirely too sure what the situation at the club is like at the moment, but that might very well end up being the case. And it might very well be Owobi who's sacrificed. But yeah, that's another topic. And yeah, just going back to this Chelsea performance, like I, say, I have sympathy, as I say, about him maybe not playing in his right position. But based on his performance, I think he can only really get a five. Didn't have the necessary impact and gave the ball away a lot. And yeah, just... It wasn't quite as on it as everyone else was. So, yeah, that's a five for a Wobie. And then McNeil similarly kind of struggled to really get involved too much. You know, with us being back against the wall, it, it just wasn't maybe his sort of game the way he's been playing the last few weeks. But on the other hand, he's still providing a lot of support defensively and helped to nullify the threat of both Reese James and Kai Havertz down that right pretty, pretty much throughout the match. Um, helping on along with Godfrey, of course, who's not quite in his most natural position at left back. So that's always really positive to see. And like it's like again, similarly to the core, he's just been a like a man possessed recently in the last few weeks compared to the player we thought we'd signed uh, under Lampard, Dwight McNeil. So yeah, another really um, you know, not quite as good as he's been the last few weeks. Obviously, he was outstanding against Brentford, getting that goal, of course, but still a very good performance and just a just a six, I think, for McNeil. Um, and then Damari Gray, of course, up front. Again, just absolutely working his arse off. And again, it's another one of those games where he's almost feeding off scraps, really, and just trying to make something happen against a really, you know, mean defence, isn't it? You know, the likes of Koulibaly and Badashile. You know, it's a really tough defence that Chelsea have now. And, uh, you know, Gray was never going to um, outstrength one of them. It was all going to be about trying to outpace one of them. But that's easier said than done. So I thought... Based on what he was given, he did a solid enough job, and you know was helping out defensively as well, of course. And uh, yeah, I think I think you know it, it it wasn't quite his type of game, but at the same time, it's the it's the type of game that we need him in. And you know you need someone like that if you're not going to have a target man, you need someone who can just chase after scraps. And and you know if if there were to be any mistakes from those Chelsea defenders, Gray would have been straight on it. So that's a, a really positive from him. And then. I say we never really do substitutions, but of course, based on uh, what happened in this game, we have to give a mention to uh, Ellis Sims. Uh, absolutely brilliant goal. Like I said, we just mentioned about how how much of a um, you know defensive rock Koulibaly is, and and yet Sims made him look like an average defender. Breeze past him, really composed finish. You know, you could argue maybe the keeper should, could maybe do a bit better, but. Say nothing away from our world that Sims has done that. And, you know, just to have that confidence to take on a, you know, an internationally renowned defender in Kulabari like that and make him look a bit silly and, and still uh, put the finish away as well. So, absolutely brilliant for him. He's going to get a seven even though he's only on the pitch for about 20 minutes. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's earned us that draw at the end. So, absolutely brilliant for him. And hopefully that can be the kickstart. Um, of a really promising career. I'd like to think he'll start the next match now against Tottenham. Uh, maybe we can try and build on that aerial threat a bit more, which we've been lacking since Calvert Lewin's been injured. Maybe try and play a bit differently. Might uh, you know, mix up Tottenham a bit. Who are obviously um in a bit of a rut at the moment. But uh, again, uh, similar to what I said about Anana, really. Let's be patient with Sims. You know, he's not going to be doing this every week, scoring goals like that, and you know, winning us points. Still a very young lad. Still getting to grips with this league and uh but you know the words Dyche was saying about him seem very positive and I think I'd like to think now he's at least you know boosted his place in the pecking order at least above Mope because he's shown that even before this match, you know, I remember him coming on against Leeds. Um and that having a really uh impressive cameo appearance and you know he's just shown he just gives more to us than Morpe does. So I think Gray is still maybe who will be starting going forward, but it might very well be that Sims is given the nod against Tottenham just to see if we can play a bit differently. But it's nice to have that extra option now and hopefully his confidence can build from here and he can 
continue to be um you know a really important asset to us. But uh, yeah, like I say, really positive feeling around around the place at the moment now. And we're, you know, and most most results this weekend, maybe not all of them. Southampton getting a last minute draw, of course, and lead the winning, but still some very good results for us this weekend. And uh, and yeah, I think we're all starting to believe that maybe we can just do this because we're getting results that we maybe shouldn't be getting. You know, normally we've got to still get a draw away from away at Chelsea. You know, based on the form they've been in of late as well, of course. So I have a really positive result and. And it's and it's down to hard work from everyone really and a lot of effort. So yeah, I think on that positive note, um, that wraps up this video. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment below, giving your uh, ratings for each player and giving your thoughts on the match, um, and and some of the other questions we've raised within this video. And uh, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel for more Everton content. And we will see you in the next video. Cheers.